want to add what Harold said. He's a workaholic. I tend to be too, but my goal right now is to take six months off. If I work six months, then I can take off six months. <laughs> That's what my goal is. And that, you know, free, well, see, I'm a little older probably than everybody here. You know, I'm not a spring chicken, but um, so I have my little retirement goals going on right now. So I want to be able to, to sit back for a little while before I get too old to enjoy it. <laughs> as you should. <laughs> exactly. You know, because as, as CRAs, we travel and the travel takes a toll on our bodies. You know, we're yeah. tired sometimes and we still have to work. We still have to get it in. We got to do reports and it's not a, it's not a nine to five. Everybody knows that it's, you know, it's more like 12 hours a day. Sometimes around the clock, get those report reports in, you got to do what you got to do. And it takes a toll on your body. So being a contractor um, gives me that freedom to take the time and gives me time freedom so that I can do what I need to do for myself and my family. Um, and um, also, it also gives me freedom with my money. Um, I guess we can get into that a little later, but um, <laughs> I have control over my money when the taxes are paid. It's not taken out right before I get it. I get all the money first. And that's the good thing for me. So I can control what's going on in my finances and then, you know, Uncle Sam would take care of him later because I'm first. Right, right. <laughs> Whoa, that sounds amazing. Freedom. I like how you said, you know, being a clinical research contractor is freedom. And with what Mr. Harold said, I know he was talking about a LLC, a sole proprietor. So if you want to be a clinical research contractor, is that the way to go starting your own LLC? becoming a, is that, is that how you kind of start or can you, you know? Well, I know yeah. I can start. Let You could go ahead, Harold. Um, yes, that's how I did it. And um, the reason why too is that uh, an independent contractor, um, you, you are a professional and you work under your, your own kind of name and your own branding. So, um, Companies, uh, companies nowadays, they require a certain, uh, not, not only experience, but they also require a certain amount of uh, coverage that you need to have. You, you see it like uh, um, any, any independent, any person that works independent, before you hire them, you want to see a license, you want to see their, their track record, you want to see, I mean, you want to see if they have insurance, if they didn't do a good job. So it is, it is so professional to do it that way. And, and I haven't seen people do it a, a, a different way. So yeah, that's, that's what, I, what, what I will recommend. Okay. I have seen, I have had, um, personally have had uh, recruiters tell me that, they, that you don't need to have an LLC um, to be a contractor, but in my uh, experience, it, it's better to have an LLC because of how you receive your money. And yeah. because the more money that you make, if you're making it in your name, your personal taxes will be taxed higher. So if you use a business and then use your business and, and, and use your expenses for your business, then that'll bring down your taxable income and you won't have to pay a whole lot of money on the tax as yeah. far as taxes are concerned. So it's best to, yes, it's best to have an LLC, a, um, a, a company that you can work through and pay yourself through. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe companies will, will see you more as a, as a professional if you present as an, as an mm -hmm. LLC or, or, or an, a legal entity, absolutely. So where can people find clinical research contract jobs? It's, it's good um, to always network. Um, it's always good to, to 
to meet people and um, and network. And it, I've networked for years and um, LinkedIn, putting on LinkedIn, for instance, that you are interested in, um, in contracting. And because basically what it is, is that you, you have to have someone to give you a chance. Uh, from the very beginning as a CRA, if you are an uh, inexperienced CRA or you're a CRC and wanting to, wanting to be a CRA, then it's a little difficult for you to transition over until you find someone that gives you a chance, you know? And um, once you get, in, get your foot in the door and, and take the steps to find and find people to mentor you and to show you what needs to be done. And there are companies who have programs that will um, walk you through and train you how to be our, a CRA and um, gaining that year or two of experience to know exactly what you're doing is, is, is very um, crucial to being a, um, a contractor. Because like Harold said, you want to be, you want to present yourself as being professional and, um, and that you're knowledgeable of your work. It's, it has, it has, an, it has also a little bit more as, um, as a CRA, like a junior CRA, uh, everything you do comes from a company that gives you lead. If you work for a CRO or if you work for a pharma company, uh, and that experience is very important, uh, you know, to become a contractor. I would not recommend somebody that has a year or less than a year experience to become a contractor because it's not only um, the, the, the professional uh, attitude or the professional way to present yourself, there is more to it. There is there is branding. There is also the whole tax of uh, tax taxing. There is also your money because if we talk about money, most of the time uh, companies pay you. You invoice them, and and I, I I tell you, I've worked for companies that pay me after sixty days, and 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 if you if you're not prepared for all that, and you still have to travel because all the travel is out of your pocket, everything. Mm -hmm. the, the hotels, everything it comes, comes first out of your pocket and then you get it reimbursed. So if you've been working, if you just enter the, the field as a junior CRA and now you, you jump and you, you, you pick a contract and now you have to wait 60 days before you get paid, <laughs> that, that, can, that, can be a, that can be an issue. And, it depends also on your family, uh, your family kind of um, situation. If you have a spouse that has a, a full-time job, it's always good because like insurance wise, you can, you can be on your spouse's insurance because again, talk about money as a contractor, you have to pay your own insurance and, and, and a lot of stuff comes out of your pocket first. So you have to be prepared. To, to be to be that so I would not recommend like a junior CRA uh, to become a contractor because you know it's just you you just gonna fall out <laughs> yeah I, I mean I've been there sometimes you have to you have to choose the cheapest hotels and you know if you travel let's say you miss a flight you need to just buy another ticket you cannot be calling people and and all that kind of stuff. So you 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 want to be prepared to be that to be like that first. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say. So it sounds like you need to really be good with money management, and you need to have a loving and understand <laughs> an understanding partner so you can be on their uh, health insurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So with that, the next question: Can you walk me through a typical day as a contractor, Miss Janita? Same as a CRA. It's the same as a CRA, a, a W-2 CRA. We do the same thing. The only thing is, is that um, like Harold was saying, I have to pay for my own, I have to pay my own way. And and hopefully Harold, we're not gonna do 60 days. We, 30 days is, is bad enough. 60 days is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're not well, I, I have 
okay. I pay company, they, they pay you when they get paid. Like these small, small CRO, small, they pay you when they get paid from the sponsor. So sometimes it can get. Yeah. The one that I'm with now is 30 days. And I'm like, wow. I, I don't, <laughs> I used to work for Duke and I got paid once a month. I hated it. <laughs> but like you said, you definitely have to be prepared for it. You have to be prepared. You have to have those credit cards ready to, to, to um, put those, those expenses on it until you can pay for it when you get paid. So, but a typical day is, is just like a regular CRA. It's no different. We just get paid differently. That's all. Okay. So my, with that being said, um, can you have more than one contract job at a time, Mr. Yeah. Harold? Oh, go ahead. I'm just trying. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. So certain uh, instances, um, you build that up as the, yeah, of course you can, but um, be careful because uh, as you all know, as CRAs, um, the type of study that you are on can be different. Uh, oncology studies are very time consuming. Uh, hospital studies are very time consuming. So you have to be careful when you take on uh, different contracts. You don't want to have two, two different oncology contracts because you, you're never going to be home or <laughs> you're never going to sleep. It is possible, yeah. And the, the way you manage the, main, the way you manage like uh, multiple contracts is the same as a CRA, right, as yeah. you, man, you, you manage your work when you work, for instance, uh, you work on three protocols and you have three different line managers and they all want their stuff to be done at a certain time. That is the same way you manage the, your, your different contracts. And there are also um, different allocations to contracts. Some contracts are 75%. Where then, then if you have a seventy-five percent, then you'll find a, another one that's twenty-five, or um, there can be a fifty-fifty. And I've heard of people doing full contracts two at a time. That that that, that wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that at all. Um, and then also to note that um, you have to know what's in your contract. Um, of whether the CRO or the sponsor that you're working with is um, whether they have a clause in your contract that you can't work for anyone else while you're working for them. So definitely have to have to check that out as well. So we kind of yeah. already touched on this, but as far as it goes with legal paperwork, what legal paperwork is required? And do you usually say with these contracts, do you have someone else help you re like review the contracts to make sure, or have you just been doing it so long that you just, you know, exactly what to look for when you're reviewing the contracts before you sign them? I think as so a new what? contractor, you should have someone to look at it. Um, and as you go along, you'll know what to look for as you get, gain more experience as a contractor. But I do think that it's best to have it looked at um, by a, a lawyer um, before you accept it. Yes, I, I agree. And sometimes a CPA, uh, which you will be using if you're a contractor, can help you out to mm -hmm. uh, check out the financial part of it. Mm -hmm. With the does that get pretty expensive having a CPA looking over? Well, you you're gonna use your CPA anyway to do your taxes uh, because going back to taxes, you always file as an individual and as a company. Mm -hmm. So you always submit two kind of two tax uh, uh, two tax filings, mm -hmm. and and you you will you will need the CPA. At least I I need the CPA for that. I'm not so so smart to do it myself. <laughs> I just think everyone should have a CPA or at least know one so you can bounce some questions off of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And once you get to a certain tax bracket, it's best for you to have um, a CPA because they know more of the tax loopholes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they yeah. know more of um, the, um, 
uh, is at the tip of my tongue. Write offs. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. And what you, what you can write off um, from your business. And uh, for me, I have a person that I that I use, and it's it's based on my income um, that she charges me per month because I have her do my monthly monthly um, books. So I think it's very well worth it. And also, that's a tax tax write off as well. So. You know, it's very beneficial. Uh, if you're going to do contracting work, I definitely recommend to have a, a CPA. Okay. Oh, I was going to take over, Danielle. <laughs> oh, okay. I was, uh, I was about to hand the baton over. Okay, you got it. Go ahead. <laughs> so since we're already on that topic and one of the questions was, how do you pay taxes? Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that in terms of, do you have any tips for people who are looking to get into contract work for them to pay taxes? Number one, get a CPA if you don't know what you're doing. You can have one look at your finances monthly. That's great. You can also write off that expense. I write off my QuickBooks <laughs> mm -hmm. as a sole proprietor. So mm -hmm. do you have any additional tips, either Janita or Harold? Oh, I believe um, I believe we touched base on most of it already. And uh, your CPA will give you certain advices based on your particular situation also. I mean, I can't say about somebody else's situation because you may have your you may have you may have your spouse that is on your payroll and drives you from and to the airport, drives you to places, all that kind of stuff you can situations are different. But because but the most uh the the it is most handy to have your CPA give you like uh, advice based on your situation. True. Thank you. Okay, so oh, one one other thing I want to oh. add. Um, also, in paying your taxes, I try to pay mine quarterly um, because it's just easier to instead of paying a whole big old lump sum at the end of the year. You know, so pay it quarterly so that it w it's not like a big chunk um, that you'll have to come out of pocket with. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell us how you manage assignments, especially if you have multiple? Well, um, Right now, where I'm working, I only have one protocol. Okay. So it's kind of easy peasy. <laughs> I'm not going to jinx that. <laughs> um, but um, normally, if, um, if I'm on two protocols, then um, I'm trying to give, give them 50-50. You know, and, and also another thing to consider is whether your... Um, your CRO or, or your employer is um, working with, uh, wait a minute. Mm, I just lost my train of thought. It's all right. We're going to get it. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get it again. <laughs> we'll circle back to you, Janita. How yeah. <laughs> can you, can you answer that question? How do you manage your assignments? Uh, well, as, as I as I previously said, said, if you, what I do is, it's the same way when you work on different protocols. Okay, so uh, I, I have a daily routine that I always try to keep. Sometimes, of course, I fall out of the bandwagon, but the the routine that I keep is uh, indeed I. It it is hard to 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 say that one kind of one strategy fits all. Um, because it depends, some assignments are, uh, you have to put a lot of work in right now because of the phase of the study that you are, and some of them you can, um, uh, you don't have to do that. Um, in my case now, um, I have, I have two contracts. So one is, uh, like a more laid back one, uh, where I work as an advisor, but it's still, I still have to be very active, make sure that I stay on top of things that people ask me. 
and uh, another one is just a monitoring uh, a contract, which I have to go out to sites and I have to uh, keep up uh, on a daily basis with all my sites. Um, I make sure that I have my, my, my calendar, my daily calendar, uh, and I make sure that at the end of the day, um, things that I didn't do, that I carry them over. Um, and again, it is, it's the same as when you manage uh, different protocols for the same sponsor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I figured out what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> So uh, with some um, companies as a contractor, they only allow you 40 hours, depending on what you have signed up for. Um, and so you're only going to work 40 hours. Even if you need to do overtime or work more than the 40. This is contract work now. We're getting paid by hours that we work. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so if they are only allowing 40 hours, then, you know, it, we got to find a cutoff spot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, keep that in mind, everyone. Yeah. You have to, you have to, you know, learn to say no, <laughs> basically, you know, because um, you are not, you can't bill for more than 40 hours, hmm. not unless it's in your contract where you can, you can work overtime other than that. You, you'll have to, you know, like Harold said, it's like being a CRA, but you do have to monitor your time. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that could be tough if you need extra hours to complete your work, but not get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know we touched, uh, touched a little bit on insurance, but from the Black Women in Clinical Research Group, I saw that some people are able to find W-2 uh, contract work, which I would, I would assume would offer insurance, but I'm not sure. Can you explain a little bit more about the insurance part? W-2 oh, contractors part. do, um, they get, con they get their insurance from the, um, the recruiting company that they're working through. Okay. So, um, but as a, as a 1099, um you don't get the insurance you don't get the taxes taken out you don't it's just straight money that comes directly yeah. to you yeah a w2 contract is pretty much the same as a uh, as a permanent contract mm -hmm. the only thing is there is a time limit on it it is for instance one year or two years but but for the rest you 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 pay benefits. You you even can participate in four hundred one k's. They pay your insurance. It, it's it's just like a permanent uh, position uh, in most of the cases. And as uh, as you just said, the insurance is being paid by the staffing company. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, what is the most challenging part about your job, Janita? <sighs> Hmm. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't say that I have the, I think the most challenging part is walking from my bedroom to my office. <laughs> okay. In the beginning. Okay. Let's, let, let's take it back. Let's take it back. In the, in the beginning, when you first started doing contract work, what did you find difficult? Um, time management. I think it, it, just like you said before, um, wanting to do a good job and and then you find yourself working overtime when you, you and then you realize oh, I'm not getting paid for this oh my mm -hmm. god you know so you have to catch yourself and it's like okay um hmm I'm gonna have to buckle down and figure this out you know because I want to do an excellent job and I know that I need time to do the excellent job so I have to I have to you know just plan it out yeah so yeah. If, I, if I do a, a SIV on Monday and then I have a remote visit on on Wednesday then I know I got to get that report in so I'm ah you know <laughs> so yeah you got to get that report <laughs> in before that before the next visit because you know all of that stuff all in your head you get it all mixed up it's it's easy to get it mixed up but um just having a plan 
helps a lot. Yeah. It helps tremendously just to have a plan, a plan of action. For sure. Yes. I yes. And, and as I said, it's uh, it's also it's also branding. See it like um there is a challenge too, because the challenge is that contracts are most of the time for a certain for, for six months, for a year, mm -hmm. for two years. So you always have that thing thinking that, okay, what am I gonna do after this? You know, so you constantly on the look also for for a better contract, for a new contract, you always on the look. And and to to minimize that a little bit, uh make sure that you brand yourself well, that you do a good job because the way you can the way that you can kind of uh evaluate yourself is do I get a lot of repetitive business? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, once you in with a recruiter or a company, even if it's the contract is done, you out after six months, they, they call you again. And, you know, I have that a lot. I work for recruit, some recruiters I work now for 10 years because they always have something that is following or the same company wants you back. So that is, that is a little bit of a challenge here yeah, because you always, uh, you always think about like, what am I going to do next year? And, yeah. and I've been lucky that I've been always working, but I have, I had plenty of colleagues that have not been working for a while. Uh, I mean, like now everybody's working now. It's like crazy out there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that is, that is the challenge here to always know that this is going to end. And also that, um, you also built, you built good uh reports with sites mm -hmm. you know you build reports good reports with people and then all of a sudden yeah it's gone yeah. you have to move on yeah that that's that's a little bit challenging too yeah that's where the networking comes in you know because you're you're constantly um talking to people and making friends with people yeah. from sites yeah. and recruiters and you know so they're always going to keep you in mind if you if you yeah. um you know make your mark in their minds you know so network is very networking is very important um to stay employed um yeah. and then you know and you're like me then you, you know maybe you want to take a month off yeah <laughs> And go vacation, right? On somebody's <laughs> beach. <laughs> For a little while. But that is important. So branding yourself is super important. And we talk about uh, all the time. Also building yeah. relationships for rec recruiters. You don't just have to hit recruiters up just when you're looking for something. Build that, that quote unquote friendship with them so that when a contract does land on their table that you you pop up in their mind. Um, and also have a great work, th work ethic because yeah. it brings people back to you. Like, oh, I remember Harold did such a good job. Let me contact him again. So you keep getting those contracts. So that's super important. Mm -hmm. uh, and so last question before we get into the audience questions, what is the most rewarding part of your job as a contractor? I know the time off, <laughs> take vacations. <laughs> I'll be honest, the money. The money. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> Money. So, so the money and what else? The money and the freedom. And the freedom. Oh, yeah. That freedom part the, is such a kind of so life. Important. You don't. Yeah, the kind it. of work life, the work life balance. You decide your work life balance, That's which is right. which is important. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. You know, and nobody has control over you. Hmm. Yeah. That's a good perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no one has control. It's a good feeling. Um, your uh, line manager doesn't have control. <laughs> you know, your uh, CTM doesn't have control. Wow. You know, it's you have control. Now, when you're working with a, a CRO or a sponsor as a contractor, you have someone that you have to that's, report to. That you have to report to, yes. Um, but there's there's no fear of um being let go yeah because <laughs> for you for you two you can easily pick up another contract so yeah. you don't have that fear you're like okay y'all don't want me somebody else will you know so <laughs> that's a that's a great feeling to have 
for sure. I think within the African American, the Black community, let me just say that, we don't often feel a sense of freedom to do all these things. We're all often like, I have to have a job. I can't take this risk of having a month off because I don't know where the funds may come from. I'm afraid maybe I don't have an emergency fund. Everybody on this call, have an emergency fund, please. Um, but yeah, the sense of freedom is, is so important and I, I love to hear it. I love to hear it. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna get into some of the audience questions. I don't know if you see any. Yes, I okay. so I got a question. My question, yeah. I guess I'll ask my question. So we talked about money and Mr. Harold said that <laughs> this is, you know, money is the motivator. <laughs> so with the contract job, how much, you know, what do you, you set your own prices? How, how does that really work? Do you negotiate? Like if they, you say, this is my price and they tell you, no, this is ours. Do you, do you counter offer? How does that work with, you know, being a contractor? Yes, you counter offer. I always like to um, start high and then come down to where I want to be. So if, um, say for instance, you, I'm a senior CRA, so I know what the um, going rate is. The rate is, um, but as a W-2, when you transition over, you have to factor in that you're not gonna be, they're not paying for benefits for you anymore. So that number is gonna go higher. So uh, for instance, if you're getting paid um, just uh, off the top of my head, 110,000 as a CRA and, um, and then you wanna go contract, you have to add at least 35, $45,000 to that because that's how much money is going into your benefits. Hmm. Yeah. So, so we're talking you know, about 150. So you're as a contractor, you're gonna you're gonna ask for 150, something like that. Um, because oh, wow. there, there's absolutely no way that you're gonna be able to pay for your um, insurance and everything out of your pocket uh, as getting paid as a W-2. You have to counter for that. You have to take take that into account. So, okay, let's get to these. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I was gonna say, let's jump into these questions. We, it looks like we got a lot. Yeah. Let's see. I see, I um, see them already. Do you want me to ask? Yeah, kind of the stuff we've already kind of talked about. I know someone was asking how many years of experience does a CRA needs to have before transitioning to a contract? I remember we said two years. Um, that was, let's see, let's scroll down these. How much experience? Oh, Miss Johnita answered that question. You don't need experience to have an LLC. Yes, but some people with with having with the LLC question. You you don't have to have any experience getting an LLC. No. Um, <laughs> the experience comes when you when you are a CRA. You you really really should have experience as a CRA before you decide to branch out as a contractor. Because like yeah. Carol said, you have to um, be a money manager. You know, you have to make sure that you're prepared. You have to make sure that your family is prepared. You got to make sure that, you know, you have the credit cards to put the, the, the flights on, you know, and sometimes that can run into the thousands, you know, so you can't have an American Express with $500 on it. It's not going to work. <laughs> 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 so as a contractor, how were your assignments during the height of COVID last March? Um, as I can say, I can say as anybody else, we have had a very difficult time where uh, people can, uh, were not able to go out. So uh, we did a lot of stuff uh, remotely, you know, a lot of remote risk-based monitoring. Uh, and in fact, uh, it was good if you if you don't have to travel and you still put the same amount of hours in. It's perfect. Yeah, it was. A, I have had a very good year last year as far as not going out and be at home, be busy, and and kind of manage my assignments. It, it was really good. Yeah, I agree. 
<laughs> I agree. I went out um, in January. I had um, three visits in January. And then the third week in January, my company shut it all down. They said, nobody's going anywhere anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, hey. Fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I have a kind of a question. So um, can you guys go back to when you first was able to get a contract? Like how, like how did that happen? Like if you can remember back when you was you first got your contract and how was that process? Um, my my experience my experience I was a little fortunate because um I was a lead CRA and the person that uh my co monitor was a contractor for a couple months. So I could get everything out of him, what he did, how he did things. And so when I started, uh I already had experience, so and I was very fortunate to have a get a contract that you know was very kind of uh financially well and and that's that's how i started mm -hmm. so i was a little bit lucky now i have to say that yeah well it, it wasn't um my journey wasn't as easy <laughs> so <laughs> i had my llc for a couple of years before i got a contract um mm -hmm. and i um uh, one other thing we need to talk about is insurance. So for your LLC, for your, as being a contractor, but um, I had all of that in place um, before I actually got a contract because that's, that's what my anticipation was um, because I wanted to do that. And I feel like when you are, uh, if you have that desire, then you put it out there and you start working towards it. And um, it just so happened that the company that I was working for, I wasn't satisfied with um, the camaraderie of, of, of my colleagues that I was working with. And um, my daughter was looking on LinkedIn and she says, oh, didn't you say you wanted to work for a sponsor? And I said, yeah. So she says, well, look at this, look at this mom. <laughs> And I looked at it, I was like, hmm, they're in Raleigh. Okay, they're small, that's good. And I applied and, you know, and I got the position as, as the contractor. So it's, it's, um, it's not always easy, just like come, coming from a CRC to be a CRA, it's sometimes it's a tough transition uh, so, and you have to have somebody in your corner, like Harold had that person that helped him, you know, so yeah. we have to have to basically network and stick together in order to get to that point. So, yeah, because yeah, it wasn't a, a, a fast transition for me, but I love it now. It's worth it. Yeah, well, it's really worth it. Yeah, once, once, once a contract, uh, you never go back, right? Oh, I'm <laughs> never going back. <laughs> if I say once back. a contractor, always oh, a contractor. Sure. You guys are making me uh, consider, you know, yeah. all this freedom. I like this this freedom and flexibility. Let's see. The next question is, what are the greatest differences in liabilities kinds of going from full time to contractor? You're depending on yourself as a contractor. You're not depending on anyone else um, for your livelihood. It's up to you. It's up to you. You know, if you don't go to work, you won't get paid. Yeah. If you don't clock in, if you don't turn in that timesheet, if you don't do your work, you're not gonna get paid. You can't stay home and say, Oh, I'm sick. I don't feel good. I'm gonna call in sick today. <laughs> That's not happening because if you do that, you will not get paid, and your pockets will know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> so get yeah, to the was... get to the money. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so our next question: Is it okay to take any contractor job if you are just starting, since it's really hard to get your foot in for any position in clinical research? 
Well, as I as I previously say, yeah, it is not recommendable for when you just, when you are just starting to to go into contracting. Uh, it is better to to get some experience because see it like this. Um, as a contractor, you should be able to take on any type of uh, therapeutic area that they throw to you. I mean, if they if you if you just started, you're not gonna have and oncology and cardiovascular and dermatology, you're not gonna have that. So when you when you start, try to be like proficient in what you do. I mean, if you if you're really good in one therapeutic area, that's what you wanna take on as a contractor because most of the time they don't expect to train you uh, to train people a lot with contracts anymore. Uh, even nowadays, companies they they tell me that. We don't need to train you. We, we, we don't even need to send, send somebody out with you to observe a visit. They don't do that. So, and, and if you just started and you, <laughs> and you go out and there is nobody to supervise you, it, it's, it's not going to be good. So I would not recommend somebody that just started mm -hmm. uh, in this area to become a contractor. So how many protocols do you handle as a contract CRA? Well, it, it, uh, it, really depends. it depends. Assignments yeah. are. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. It depends on what the, what the company assignments are um, and, and how much uh, work they have available yeah. for you to do. So how long has your longest contract been in your shortest contract? For me, it's for me, uh, the one that I'm on now, it, it goes in five years. And then uh, the shortest one was like six months, but that was a phase one uh, because there is a difference between phase one and other phases. Phase one studies are most short, short one, two, three months. So anytime you you on a phase one study, it's not going to last longer than six months. Uh, and in fact, a, a permanent con uh, sorry uh, a regular contract can go on can go on forever. I know folks that that have doing that been doing it for eight years. They 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 are with the same sponsor. So I have a question about someone who is new to clinical research, and they're asking if we can elaborate on what a CRA and a contractor does? So a, well, a CRA is, a contractor is a CRA, okay? The job is the same, we just get paid differently. So a yeah. CRA is a person who monitors a study and makes sure that the sites are following the protocol, adhering to the protocol, of the sponsor and making sure that all the, the data that is being collected is, is good. And um, just, just a short way to describe what a CRA does. I also um, referred them to watch the CRA panel that we previously had on the Black Women in Clinical Research YouTube where they can learn a lot more about the life of the CRA. <laughs> I was saying, join our join our groups. We we talk about it a lot in the Facebook groups and on the LinkedIn groups. Daniel, I have some questions that were directed straight or sent straight to me that I like okay. to ask for the audience. Go ahead, uh, Janita. You previously mentioned about allocation. So, can you explain what that means about the seventy five percent and then twenty five percent allocation? So. Um... Allocation means that a contract is not always going to be 100%. Um, sometimes it could be 50% where they only want you to work 20 hours a week or they want 75% or 100%. So um, in having the smaller 50% uh, say uh, contracts, then you are able to get another part-time contract to to uh, bring that to a hundred percent. And both of them, you will be able to negotiate your price for them. Thank you. Thank you.
Danielle, did you have anything else? Oh, I thought you had some more. <laughs> How many sites <laughs> do you manage? Right now, I have, I think, uh, I think 25. Ooh. But then, but but then it's mostly remote though. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's remote. So you know we can do remote twenty five remote. And you talking about traveling to twenty five? We don't have to talk about that. <laughs> I guess but, when you were professional, yeah, twenty five remote is good. That definitely seems like you have to really be organized to have that many sites. So, and then I, also know that. Um, it's a handling of them because some sites are closing. Some sites are not doing anything. You know, then there's some sites that are like extremely active. So you're going to, you know, juggle your time for the ones that really need you, you know, and then when you have the sites that's closed out and you're closing them out, they're gone, you know, yeah. so it's just a juggling of your time. I have a little bit more than that than you. Uh, and as you said, uh, some of them are high enrollers, some of them are low enrollers, some of them don't enroll at all. So uh, yeah, if you would have, like you said, 25 and they all high enrollers, then you would go crazy. But luckily it's, it's not, it's never like that. How many do you have, Mr. Hare? I don't know if I wanna ask this question. But, um... <laughs> How many do you have? Because you said you have, I have more. more than, I have more than I have more than twenty-five, but I do three protocols, so it's a little bit more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't a lot hear of you. multi-center studies. I'm gonna say I didn't hear you drop a number, sir. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> okay, we're moving on. <laughs> I have another question on my end. Okay. So, for those of you who have long contracts, can you negotiate your rates throughout the contract according to the economic changes? Hmm. That's um, a question. I think I, I do that because I haven't had to do that. Okay. I all I always try to do that, but my lovely wife is always telling me, "Don't be greedy. <laughs> Just work your contract." <laughs> because anytime they extend, I, I yeah, I try to kind of you know put some on top of it, but then my wife is like, uh, <laughs> "Don't be greedy." So uh, I kind of don't negotiate. I, I just you know take it as uh and it is in initially yeah so you you pretty much negotiate at the renewal or yeah, if yeah. they extend yeah. it okay yeah Thank you. that's that's good that you guys have a it's a husband and wife team i know it's a lot of people that um are involved in clinical research and they're couples uh-huh as soon as I, I get say, my husband on board, I'm I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I must say I talk to uh, Miss Coretta all the time. Me and her are chatting up. Okay, oh, so there's I think there's one more question, which oh. is what are the pros and cons of working as a contractor for a small versus mid-size or a large company or agency? I think the oh, difference. For a, oh, go ahead, Johnny. Yeah, yeah for a, for a small. It's most of the time it's like uh, you, you may have like a direct report or uh, things are a little bit tighter because most of the time small companies don't have like a, such a big budget uh, and you may be involved in more activities uh, while for a bigger one uh, things are more lenient and you may be assigned to one particular activity. That's my experience. Now. I'm, I'm, I'm totally opposite than that um, because I find that the smaller um, companies are more lenient. And the only thing with the smaller companies is they don't have the systems that the larger companies have that are in place. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would have to um, be able to, that, for me that works well because I like to do change. I like to, to help to um, get the ball rolling with different systems and everything. So that's, that's attractive to me. Um, but for, for a small company to me is better to work with. The only thing with that as well is that um, 
personalities get in the way sometimes of working um, when you're with a small company and people kind of know each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you kind of yeah. like in the middle a little bit, you know, so it, it, it's a, it's a give and take. It's a give and take, but still it's, it's very, very, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. So I have another question. Do you find that there is a lack of training slash learning opportunities as a contractor versus being an employee? Yes. It might. It, yeah, it might. But it is, it de and again, it depends on yourself because mm -hmm. uh, as a contractor, you, you, you make sure you have your, um, you have your ACRP or you have your MAGI or you have your kind of professional uh, membership where you can get your information from. Uh, and you have to get into the mindset that uh, it's on you. You initiate everything that you do. And uh, I find out that as a contractor, most of the time we know a lot more than regular CRAs that wait till the training is being presented, wait till the SOPs are being presented. Uh, I'm always looking to learn stuff and different stuff. So uh, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a really good thing when you when you were a contractor. So we have a question, but it's not really, I guess, contractor related, but um, any advice for how to transfer from a CRC to a CRA? I think the best thing to do is um, there are companies like PRA that Bridge have program. a branch program. Um, I believe Quintiles has one as well. Or Q IQVIA, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Get it right. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. I think they have one as well. Um, and I want to say PPD does um, yeah. have, have one of those. Um, oh, someone said the icon as well. So just look for um, companies that have a program that uh, will train you as a CRA one and they will take you through the process of learning um, everything that you need to do, learn as, as far as being a CRA and being successful at it. Yeah. Because there are a lot of fake CRAs out here now, you know, so we got, we can't be on this call and we can't be perpetrating the fraud, y'all. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, we know it. That makes it hard for everybody else, you know, because if, if somebody goes to a site and, and they're, they just mess up everything, when I come in, I got to clean it up. I don't want to do that. Yes. You know, so, so enter you get, you correctly. Get the training that you need. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I also directed that person to check the group because we do post the um, internships or the in-house CRA positions and also bridge programs within the group. Okay, because that probably goes with the next person question asking if they're entry level jobs yeah. as a CRA. Okay, so I told them that as well. <laughs> okay, okay, good to go. Let's see. See, I'll answer probably a couple of more questions. And then since we got a little bit of a late start, um, can you elaborate, elaborate a little more on how you market yourself to receive large contracts? I have a small like 50,000 annually, but because I did negotiate everything, travel, car, hotel, food, stipend, and a computer. I don't make a lot and want to make more. Any advice? I'm an operation and project management, not CRA. I'm about to say, get out, girl. Um, <laughs> that ain't, <laughs> if you, if, yeah, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't it. They not, I mean, you got, I'm, I'm just going to say, throw it out there. You have to know your worth and that's mm -hmm. not for the amount of, for 50,000 for, for you, you got two jobs. You exactly. Doing, operations no and project management mm -mm, no that's not no talk to us we'll help you yeah okay that's all we're gonna say talk to us please yes that's we've not. had so many i got the job post this week Woo! like just come talk to us <laughs> okay i think we really answered these questions the, the pros and cons of being a contractor versus the small and mid uh because. let me see <laughs> Okay, so 
is anyone else have like if anyone else has anything they want to they want to say if anyone wants to come off a of mute and ask a question we can you know probably about a couple of questions if anyone wants to I'm Hi. um I'm the one that posted about the small contract and um what would be the best way to should I apply for a mentorship or should I just go through some of the services that you offer so uh, are you in the, are you in the group? Yes, I am. Okay, well, just reach out to me or Andrika. We can point you into the right direction because that's the only that's the only one that you have. Is the one? Yeah, I I just kind of googled it. Um, <clears throat> I've been in project management. Well, I have a lot of experience, but we'll get into that later. But um, I've been in project management for about seven years now. But I took some time off with my son, and so I'm kind of coming back in. But these things don't change. But um, I kind of just Googled contracts and the first one I got, because so many people were telling me like um, the other people that were speaking were saying, you have to pay for your car and travel and food stipends and everything like that. So I thought that it would be okay because I accepted a lower salary. But as soon as I accepted it, everyone was saying, like you said, like, girl, no, you have too much experience. And I'm just trying to see what I can do at this point. When is your contract in? In November. It should end oh. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm upset just thinking about it. Well, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to get out of that because, um, and one of the things is too that it's important when you negotiate uh, that you, you, you do that very well because you might, you might as well stick with it for a year or so. I have been in in, in bad contracts too, that for instance, uh, there was nothing to do. So I could not go out. And all I was doing is admin. So yeah, it depends on how you negotiate and, and because you don't want to get out of it. Like, you know, this, it, it's, a, it's a bad rap for you. Right. And also the person kind of recommended you. So in this case, you're gonna have to set it out and, and do a better negotiation job the next time. That's how I see it. <laughs> wow. I have a can, can I say something real quick? So um, to please reach out if you are a contractor. Um, I, I, I want to make sure I'm saying this. Mecca, is that how I say it? It's Mika. Mika, okay. So sorry. Mika, I would say please reach out to Mr. Harold. Please reach out to Miss Janita. Like a lot of times when you are trying to, you know, go into these roles and if you don't have anyone to guide you and kind of tell you, yeah. you know, like bounce these ideas and be like, hey, this company wants to offer me, you know, 50000 Is that a good price or should I take it? Should I not take it? So please feel free to reach out to people that, you know, are more experienced in the area. Like everyone is very open and will answer your questions. We, you know, and a lot of times if someone reaches out to me and if I don't have the answer, I'll find someone that can help yeah. me. So it's all about really putting yourself out there and networking with so many different people, you know, and just having that support system. Okay. So Miley. Uh, I just have a, a quick question. Um, one, I just wanted to thank everybody. This is great because I'm a CRA too and I just left Acuvia um, and I'm studying potentially at Docs. But I um, found this really helpful and I've been looking into contracting. I have like about a year and a half experience. So a few, you know, a year or so from now, I'm looking into it. But I had a question about um, managing the two contracts, specifically a W-2 and a 1099, would, is that recommended or do are you supposed to kind of you, you know, if your 1099 is 1099 for each in the allocations or kind of getting an idea? Well, are you asking whether you can work a W-2 and a 1099? Yes, yeah, she like is. When you no. Do, you can do two, okay, so you have to do Yeah, because a W-2, they are, most of the time a W-2 wants you just, just for themselves. Okay. And they're going to put in in their um, their hiring uh, paperwork that you cannot work for another company because it will be a conflict of interest. Yeah. And they, so they the only hire time you. you can do two contracts is if you're a contractor. We don't want you to get in trouble and lose both jobs. Right. <laughs> I, I know someone that <laughs> and get black happened. Right. Yeah, I, I know someone that happened to so a, a, a quite a few people. They didn't re, they didn't read 
the fine print and they kind of got caught up. Are they, are you guys, um, Janita and Harold, are we, are you on LinkedIn as well? I'm assuming, but just- I'm on LinkedIn, um, okay. but my last name is Isabel. Okay. Can, can you guys- -E -L -L. Can you guys drop your information um, in the chat as we wrap up? If no one has any more questions. No, someone asked um, for Danita to talk about the insurance for the LLC. Right. Um, that was so there is liability insurance for uh, CRAs um, that um, you can purchase uh, just to cover yourself when you're on, on, um, on site, just in case anything happens that could possibly go wrong and and you're liable that would take care of that and it's like three hundred dollars a year you know something like that so um, i would recommend having that as a contractor as well yeah and the company that does it they, they do it online it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. It, it is called CMNF. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to their website and you fill out an application and um, they do it right away. You don't have to wait. Right. Okay. I have someone to write messages. I run in, I run in something new uh, the other day uh, that they required uh, workman's compensation uh, insurance. Uh, that is something new, but some some recruiters they may ask for it as well as the 1099 contractors. Okay. Well, I know we got kind of a uh, off to a late start, so I just wanted to make sure that we took enough time to answer everyone's questions. I want to thank each and everyone for attending tonight. Thank you, Ms. Janita. Thank you, Mr. Harold. Thank you, Andrika, my lovely co-host. And <laughs> so please feel free to join uh, Black women in clinical research, Black men in clinical research, uh, minorities in clinical research. We are on LinkedIn. They, all of us are, yeah, are on LinkedIn and exactly, well, Ms. Uh, Janita said she's Janita Isabel on LinkedIn. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And if you have any more questions, I saw that there was so many questions in the chat. There was like at least 30 more. So maybe I can save this chat and answer some of these questions in the group, or you guys can reach out to us directly if you still have some questions about being um, a clinical research contractor. This was so informative. I hope everyone had their notebook. It makes me want to be a contractor because I want that freedom. I want I want six months off and you know to be on a beach <laughs> and doing whatever you know I want to do. But it just seems like you know with being a contractor, you have to manage your money and you have to reach out to other people. You have to have resources. You have to have a CPA. So don't think that you have to do this alone. There is a network of people that want to help you. Black Women in Clinical Research wants to help you. Uh, the speakers, Ms. Janita, Mr. Harold, we all want to help. You know, we all want to see everyone do well in the clinical research industry. And this is why we do what we do. We're passionate about it. We enjoy helping people. We enjoy help change lives. So thank you so much for everyone. And you have a great night. Thank you. thank you. And uh, I want to thank everybody too. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity of uh, uh, being in clinical research. I've been at it for a while. It is uh, not only the business part of it. It is only the job that you do. It's, it's very satisfying. I'm not sure if one of you have worked on a, on a product and see it on the market now. Uh, I have worked on several products that are on the market now. And it is like, it's really, it, it makes you really feel good about your job. It's not just the money, but the job gives you a lot of satisfaction. And I love to see more color people come into re, uh, clinical research because, I mean, it, it's a really good field to be in. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ms. Johnny, thank you. I'm about I, to say, anyone has any last thoughts? I wanted to say in, um, in line with Harold that even though the money's good and the freedom's good, it is great to know that what we do is helping someone else um, yeah. with their quality of life. 
And just a quick story, um, and I'm not gonna get choked up, I promise. Um, my <laughs> brother um, passed away in 2013 with multiple myeloma. And at the time I was working in, in cancer and oncology. And because of the knowledge that I gained, I was able to help him in, in advocating for him and so that he can live four years more, Absolutely. four years longer for his yeah. life. And, and his son got to, got to know who his dad was before he passed away. So it makes a difference. This, this, this work really makes a difference to, in people's lives. And just to have someone be able to live, even if it, there's not a cure, just a little bit longer to be with their families makes a difference in the world. Well, I know you so said you, you everyone for joining us tonight. I'm about to say, I know you said you wasn't yeah, going to get choked you. up, but I, I felt a little, you know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, I, thank I, you so much. God um, and clinical research. That's what I say. God, I'm alive <laughs> because of clinical research as well, but that's a whole nother story. You're going to have to, I'm going to have to interview you one day so you can tell everyone your story, but <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Donnell, can we do this again? We, we're we here every third <laughs> Thursday of the month. <laughs> we have different topics. We can, we can do this again. Contact me. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night.